So we just proved the difference formula for cosine, and now we're going to prove the sum formula for cosine. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to use a difference formula right at the top of the screen. Now, you should be wondering how in the world we're going to use a dif difference formula because we got a plus, not a minus. So the way we're going to do it is force it to be a minus. Just like that right there. So we go from plus to subtract a minus or subtract a negative. Now, very carefully going to put negative b wherever I see b up there. Well, everywhere I see b. So the other two places that I see b are going to be negative b. So this is cos a cos of negative b plus sine a sine negative b. And now I have to remember even in odd properties, good news is all we need is a sine cosine even in odd. So cos negative x is cos regular x. The sine negative x is the odd one, that's negative sine x. And these are from the even odd properties that we looked at on last class. So that means the first one here, cos negative b is cos regular b. Sine negative b, however, that negative is going to make the entire sine b negative. So this is cos a plus b. So we only had to do that crazy geometry once. We did that last class for what's in green at the top of the board. Now we're going to use these two identities to answer some questions. And these will be similar to what I'd put on a quiz or a, a midterm exam. So first up, so find cosine 75 degrees. If you don't like degrees, you can turn it to radians. I'm going to leave it in degrees for the moment. <clears throat> Let's think about all the angles that we know sines and cosine values for. So I do know about 0. I know about pi over 6. No pi over 5s, but there is pi over 4, and pi over 3, and pi over 2. Now I'm going to write these in degrees. I'm not normally a degree person. So I wrote in radians first. So we haven't talked about uh, converting from radians to degrees for a while, but this is what we did in week one. Can you see two of those degrees that add to 75? 30 and 45. So if we just take those two together, we get 75 degrees. So I can rewrite this as cosine 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. And this lets me use the formula at the top of the board. So this is going to split up. So we got cos 30, cos 45. Minus sine 30 degrees sine 45 degrees. So any questions on splitting up 75 or using that formula right there? So now test yourself. Do you know cos 35, cos 40, sine 35, and oh, wow, cos 30, sine 45? So write down the four trig values. Hopefully you know them. If not, you can get out your quiz number one with your unit circle. These are right off the first quadrant. 45 is in the middle. 30 degrees is up there.
Oh wow, that's not 30 degrees. That's 60 degrees. That's not the point I want. That's the point I want. Any questions on this sign? 75 degree problem. Those other four trig function values, you just have to pick the right one off the unit circle. And of course, use the right angles. The first one that I drew was 60 degrees, so I'm going to just delete that off of there. We're not going to work in degrees too often. So we'll do another almost identical problem, except this will be in radians. So now we're going to look for cosine pi over 12. So first of all, pi over 12, you don't know any true values for pi over 12s. So I don't know them either. So what we're going to do is use the sum or difference formula here. So first step's going to be the same. Write down angles we know. Instead of writing in degrees, how do we make fractions not suck? Common denominators. Oh, very good. You're learning. Common denominators. So can we write everything in twelfths here? Yes. Yep. So go ahead and write out all these in twelfths and tell me two of them that add or subtract to give you 1 pi over 12. So write all these out in twelfths. You can skip zero. So everybody's a genius when there's common denominators. We're all good at fractions when we have common denominators. What two fractions subtract to give me 1 pi over 12? Uh, which two? 4 pi and 3 pi. So we can do 4 pi and 3 pi, subtract those two, definitely. We actually have another choice. 2 pi and 3 pi over 12. So whichever the two you want to use, go for it. <clears throat> so I'll just use the 2 right there. So we got pi over 12 equals, now I'm going to act like I'm really smart. Pi over 12 equals pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Now I'm not a fraction genius. All I did was use those two and subtract them. And just looking there, pi over 3 minus pi over 4 is pi over 12. So any fraction questions before we use a formula? So I cannot stress enough how important common denominator is. Otherwise, fractions are almost impossible. If you go common denominator, they're not bad anymore. All right, so this is cos pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did on the last problem, except just use these two angles. So I'll try to get what you need on the board. So at the very top, uh-oh, that's the sum formula. All right, I'm going to scroll way up to the difference formula. And then you can use it. So it's now at the bottom of the board in green. So you have the right side, this cos 
one angle minus the other angle. So you're going to rewrite it with this expanded form on the left side. trig value questions. Don't spend too long simplifying it. You can leave it as the two fractions added together, although they have common denominator, so it's not too bad to add them. So in the next example, we're going to apply the difference formula. Two cosine of pi over two minus theta. squeeze that different uh, oh, that's a sum formula at the top of the board shoot so there's a difference formula is the green one so difference formula goes cosine cosine so it's cos pi over 2 cos theta plus sine pi over 2 sine theta what is the value of cos pi over 2? So that will be 0. Now cosine theta, well, when I do 0 times anything, I'm going to get 0. So that whole term is going to disappear. What about sine pi over 2? So if you're having trouble thinking about these, pi over 2 is the top of the circle. So what is the y coordinate at the top? So that'll be one. Don't be afraid to draw lots of unit circles all over your midterm, quiz, homeworks, etc. just to estimate where your points are. That can help out a lot. So first term is zero, second term is sine theta. So we get the identity, cos pi over two minus theta equals sine theta. So that's kind of strange right there. So that's a way to turn a cosine function into a sine function. You do it in a kind of weird way. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is figure out, well, what in the world is sine of a plus b? There's going to be a similar formula to the cosine a plus b, except this one's going to be different. You could do a bunch of geometry for this. I could just tell you the answer. Uh, or we could use what we just wrote down. So we'll take the middle path and use what we just wrote down instead of trying to redo all this geometry stuff. So what I'm going to do, 
from what we just wrote down above, theta is now a plus b. So wherever I see theta, I'm going to put a plus b. I have to do this very carefully. What's not quite correct with the substitution that I made? Yep, we got to treat the whole a plus b as one chunk, not just us. Uh, subtract the a, who cares, add the b. No, you subtract the entire a plus b. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to split this up into cosine of one angle minus another angle. All right, so take a break and don't write what I write in blue for a minute because it's going to be a waste. All right, what is cosine of pi over 2? Yeah. So that's 0. Entire first term is gone. And what is sine of pi over 2? 1. So it's true. I agree. This is all correct. But that doesn't get us to where we want to go. It gets us back to where we started. So that's why I said don't write it down. We're going to break this up in a slightly different way. We're going to group differently is what we're going to do. So I'm going to reassociate. We're going to reassociate like this. So I'm going to group the first two terms together and the second term separately instead of the other way around. And now we're going to apply that same difference formula for cosine, except the angles are grouped a little differently now. So this is going to be cos pi over 2 minus a times cos b plus sine pi over 2 minus a sine b. So what I just boxed in orange there's an identity on the board I can use. What, is, what could that turn into? How can I use this? So that would just be sine A. So it's the same form, just theta is going to be replaced by A. So that's sine A. And let's see what we can do over here. I think we might be stuck temporarily. I don't have, unfortunately, I'm trying to develop the formula for sine pi over 2 minus a, so I can't pretend that it exists and just use it. So we're going to do instead. All right, we're going to apply this identity that we have top of the board again. We're going to do it very carefully. So <clears throat> pi over 2 minus a, it's a little bit strange. That's going to go in for wherever I see theta, right there. So it's going to go in where I see theta. So actually, let me, I'll put an orange bubble around that. So. Where we see orange up there, I'm going to, oops, it's going to be cosine of, of pi over 2 minus this pi over 2 minus a. This is actually really nice because we have pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Those cancel, and we just have cos negative a. Now, what is cosine? Ah, it will be positive a. Good news is cosine is even, so it wouldn't care either way. But actually, that would be a positive a. So we got sine a cos b plus cos a sine b, and this was sine a plus b. So 
So there is our formula for sine A plus B. And now we're going to figure out what is sine A minus B. And we're going to do the same trick we did earlier, where we're just going to uh, use the sum formula, but instead of negative B, we're going to add a negative B. So wherever we see a B, we're going to replace it with a negative B. So I see B, B, B. So we're going to put negative B in. And cosine is even, so cosine doesn't care that it's eating a negative B. However, over here, sine negative B, that negative is going to make the sine function negative. So there's our two identities for sine, the sum and difference for sine. And we'll do some problems with this. So find seven, sine 7 pi over 12. So figure out what angles are in twelfths, and then which two add up to seven. Three. Pi over three and pi over four? That'll probably work. So we got pi over three plus pi over four. And use that sum formula at the top of the board. Sine pi over three, cos pi over four, plus cos pi over three, sine pi over four, should get square root 3 plus 1 over 2 square root 2. So this will be our last problem before we jump into cosine, uh, cotangents and tangents. So find sine 80 cos 20 minus cos 80 sine 20. <coughs> How do we use that formula at the top of the screen to figure out this problem? So I don't know sine 80, I don't know cosine 20. So using the formula at the top of the screen, what is angle A? And so angle A could be 80, and what could angle B be? 20. So we're going to use that kind of the opposite way. We're going to use start on the right side and then jump over to the left side. So we got A is 80 
degrees be 20 degrees. So this equals sine 80 degrees minus 20 degrees. So just using that formula at the top. And this is sine 60, which is square root 3 over 2. So I just gave you a bunch of identities. Even though they just felt like formulas, these are all identities. So sine A minus B, sine A plus B, somewhere up here, cos A plus B, and cos A minus B, this right there. So there's four new identities you got. So I can ask you to prove identities using these right here. So we're going to look at some identity problems next. So now you have to remember your five strategies that you had. So we don't get any new strategies, but there are always going to be more identities that we need to know. So all the new identities I'm going to give you on the formula page. So strategy, one of the strategies is start on the complicated side. I think the left side is more complicated. Uh, one of the main reasons is it has this A minus B angle. So that's a little bit strange. So I'm going to put the right side away and not touch it. Then we're going to operate on the left side. Now I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to do it in the green marker. And I'm going to come back later and erase it and act like I didn't do that. Even though I'm not going to touch the right side, what I'm going to do is use a strategy that says write these in terms of sines and cosines. So cotangent of A is cos A over sine A, and cotangent B is cos B over sine B plus 1. So I'm going to pretend like I didn't write that. So now we're just going to operate on the left the way you normally do. So first step on the left side, <coughs> I can't write in terms of sines and cosines. There is no conjugate to multiply by. There's really no factoring to do. There is one thing I can do and use the identity for cos A minus B. So that one identity that we wrote down, I'm going to rewrite this in that uh, difference formula. So cos A minus B, that is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So that's the difference formula for cosine. So any questions on that? So now I'll show you some really bad math. So this is completely incorrect. So why I'm doing it in red. Why is it not OK to cancel those two? They're the exact same. Because there's, there's that stupid plus sign. If that was multiplication, then I could just cancel them because they'd be factors. So. What I did in red is a very common mistake that none of you will make. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to split this fraction up. Your algebra brain should be thinking about this fraction like this. Two things added together, a plus b divided by b. So the way we're going to break this fraction apart, we're going to unadd it like this. And then of course, b over b is 1. So that's how we're going to split this fraction apart. So you don't get to cancel. It's not OK to cancel b and b like that. The eventually, they cancel out, but they cancel out in this way. So 
So we're going to split this fraction apart. And from here, sine A, sine B over sine A, sine B, that's 1. And cos A over sine A, cos B over sine B, well, that's exactly cotangent A, cotangent B. So any questions on showing that identity? And if you don't want me to know that you started at the end, no problem, just erase. I won't actually care at all, but you can erase that green if you want to pretend like you didn't look ahead. But just like solving a maze, it's not bad to start at the end and draw a little line back a little ways, and then you go from the beginning, and then maybe from the end again, and eventually they meet up. So we have formulas for tangent. I'll write those down. So there's tangent A plus B is tangent A plus tangent B divided by 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. And tangent A minus B, you're going to switch the signs. So this is tangent A minus tangent B divided by 1 plus tangent A tangent B. So we looked a little bit about at the periodic properties of sine and cosine we'll look, and tangent. We'll look a lot more at those when we graph them. But this property right here is a periodic property that, that tangent period is 1 pi. But what we're going to do is prove that this is true. So what I want you to do is use the first formula up here and apply it and show this is true. So the right side's obviously more simple, so put that in a box and then rewrite the left side with that top formula up there. And test yourself, see if you know tangent pi. It's pretty easy to figure out. Pi is on the left side of the unit circle negative one zero. You just have to know if tangent is x over y or y over x. It is y over x. So tangent of pi, it's not tangent theta, tangent pi is zero. So that one was pretty straightforward. Once you know tangent pi, there's not much else going on when you apply that formula. So 
So this next one's a little bit more tricky. I want you to show that tangent theta plus pi over 2 equals negative cotangent theta. And I want you to try the way that you're thinking, and it's going to fail. But I want you to see why. So go ahead and try what we just did. And I want you to tell me why it fails when you try it. So it looks like things are good so far. What is the problem? Tangent pi over 2 is undefined. So where's pi over 2? It's right at the top. 0, 1. Tan pi over 2 is y over x. So y is no problem. Our x being 0, that's the problem. So we got undefined. <clears throat> so what's undefined? So two things in here are undefined. So what does that mean? This fraction doesn't really mean anything. So we can't determine anything from an undefined fraction. So what happens when the first thing you try doesn't work? Cry, ask your mom for help. That becomes less effective as you get older. What's another strategy? You got to give you five strategies. Cry and ask your mom's not one of them. So we're down to five strategies. Right in terms of sine and there we go. Right in terms of sine and cosine. I have a question though. Yeah. In what context is this used? Like this algebra? Yeah, like the sine cosine. Like why? Why would you um, use it? Oh, why are we learning this? Oh, uh, it's a way to turn angle measurements into measurements of sides. So the short answer to that is lots of physical problems, like whether they're engineering, um, robotics, science, these type of fields. So I'm going to cross all this out. I don't really want to use, well, I'll use the red for those two because they're undefined. All right, so we're going to write in terms of sines and cosines. So tangent is sine theta plus pi over 2 over cosine theta plus pi over 2. Now we're going to use the sum formula for sine, the sum formula for cosine. So we've got to go back to the beginning of class for the sine formula and cosine formula. So hopefully I have these remembered correctly. Sine theta plus pi over 2 is sine theta cos pi over 2 plus cos theta sine pi over 2 divided by 
So now the sum formula for cosine is cos theta cos pi over 2 minus sine theta sine pi over 2. So the good news is there's no undefines yet unless we get both of the denominator terms to be 0 or they're both the same. So individually, none of these are going to be undefined. Plenty of them could be 0. So which, which of these terms are zeros? Is cos pi over 2 0 or is sine pi over 2 0? Cosine pi over 2 is 0. So that's 0. That's 0. So those two terms are going to disappear completely. And sine pi over 2 is 1. And the other sine pi over 2 is also 1. So those are going to turn into 1s. So we're going to get cos theta So we get 0 plus cos theta divided by 0 minus sine theta, which is negative cos theta over sine theta, all which is also known as cotangent theta. So if you're wondering how to write these out in a better notation, I would cross out things that are 1, but multiplied by something else. Because if you think of a product, if you want to completely erase that term, you can do that if you know it's 1, not if you know that it's 0. So when things are 0, uh, you need to denote that they're 0. So I did that by kind of circling them. To say they're going to cancel out to 0, and the other two are going to cancel out to 1. So that's negative cotangent theta. I could ask more s problems on tangent. So I could ask you things like uh, not cotangent. Or I could even go crazy and go cotangent of pi over 12. And the first thing you should think of is, well, he didn't tell me about cotangent of pi over 12. That's true. But, you know, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So the first step would be write it like this. So it's 1 over tangent. And before we saw pi over 12 is pi over 4 plus pi over 3. No pi over 3 minus pi over 4. I think that was right. So it'll be 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is 1 pi over 12. So now we're going to replace this tangent with the difference formula for tangent, which unfortunately is way up on the screen. So I'm going to use a difference formula for tangent to rewrite this tangent. So that's tangent pi over 3 minus tangent pi over 4 divided by 1 plus tangent pi over 3. times tangent pi over 4. And then you just need to figure out these values. We're in the first quadrant of the unit circle. We got pi over 3 and pi over 4. So figure out the tangent values 
and do your best to simplify this down. And the last step I did was I had a fraction of fractions, so I multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator at the end. So I just flipped that fraction over.